Hello Grinder School. This is CF the Natural and today I have a three to four table session on juicy steaks that I recorded a few days ago that I'm going to play back and do the uh, pause and review method, a uh, pause and discuss I guess I should say method of uh, reviewing this hand history uh, or I should say this recorded session. We start out with three tables. I believe I add a fourth table a little ways in. Then uh, some tables start to break. I think I get down to two tables at one point, then get back up to three. And I don't recall if I finish at three or four. Uh, the top left table is 20 PLO. Table one, table two is 10. And table three, I believe is 20 PLO as well. In fact, I know it is because here I am at just under $20. I uh, had only played a few hands in this session, uh, so let's get started. Let's pause this for a second. Somehow it went to screen. Okay, so on table number two, I flop two pair, uh, but it's on a, I'm sorry, I flop a full house. And so uh, let's back up and see, did I? Bet. Okay. Let's watch this again and see what happens. So I flop a full house, fours over jacks. And I think I bet. I want to try to get some value. So I do bet. Here on table three, I've got jacks with a suit, but low cards. I fold it. I get two calls. I bet again, 50 cents into a 70 cent pot. Again, trying to get value here. I don't have the stone cold nuts, but I have a very strong hand. And everybody folds. All right. So small pot there but I did take it down table two I don't have much table one we have a big pot going I'm not involved in it table two I'm guessing I'm gonna fold this yeah just it's not suited to the king it's not a strong enough hand I have a fairly large pot going here on table number one let's just quickly pause and see what we have here this player had oh he flopped a middle set set of jacks this player had, oh, set of fours, bottom set. So set over set over here on table one. And that's sadly pretty common here in uh, in Pot Limit Omaha. Uh, and I guess the pot didn't get super big because the river brought a flush in. Neither player had the flush, and so they were both a little bit afraid. Otherwise, you might have seen. Plus, there's a possible straight. Six, seven would be a straight. And that probably froze the action a little bit. Uh, there's also two, two, three, ace, two, three, four, five, so on the turn. So this board is very connected, and that's why neither player put their whole stack in, at least I believe so. Uh, not that this player is particularly good at 71-64, obviously, but it probably slowed down the action, and that's quite common. On a drier board, I'm guessing that this guy is going to get all the money in with set of jacks, even though there is a hand that beats him a set of aces. You just That's a cooler, and you just accept it. And this guy, you know, bottom sets a, a strong hand, but in PLO, not that strong. So let's keep moving here. Here I have aces with a suit. I'm guessing I'll make a small raise here. 48 cents, 54 cents, something like that. 48, I do. Fold table one. I'm sure I'm going to get multiple callers on table three here. And then it, as you know, it all just depends on the flop. If I improve, if I don't improve, a pair of aces alone is generally not going to be enough unless it's against one opponent, maybe two. So all I do have is aces. I do decide, I think, to see bet this. It's a slightly dry board because there is no flush draw on there. And so I'll probably try to take advantage of it. And I do bet. I'm not going to put all my stack in, but I don't mind putting a C-bet out there. Table one, I have a pretty nice double suited hand. It's not huge. Oh, am I going to fold this one here? I do fold it. Well, let's take a look. Let's uh, take a look at that again. That a, kind of a tight fold. Eight, eight, ten. Well, I'm under the gun. I'm okay. I'm double suited here, but one of the suits is to a ten, which does. That's the fourth nut flush draw. I'm sorry, fifth, ace, king, queen, jack. Fifth nut flush draw. That does, you're never going to be good if money goes in. Pair of eights is not going to be any good unless you hit a set. So I have really just a king high, potential king high spade flush draw. And I'm at a loose table. You notice that I've got two lags here. This maroon color is my thing for lag. 
two lags here, uh, a whale here, another green bad player here. So I've got a very loose table. I'm under the gun. I'm not going to have position. I guess this this is, if I was in later position, this this is a hand you can raise. The, you know, if you miss the flop, you move on. The problem is these guys are big three betters. We've got a lot of three betters at the table. And so I think I probably just because I'm under the gun didn't want to put it in because, again, if I don't really hit the flop hard, I just don't have much here. If I don't hit that flush draw or a set of eights, I just don't have anything. And the flush draw, I may have to put in a couple more dollars to call a bet. And if I don't hit, I don't hit. And I've wasted some money. So I think actually in retrospect, that was okay to fold because of my being under the gun and just uh, having limited options if I don't hit a set or hit the big flush draw. Okay, so let's move on. And I think I thought about it a bit and ultimately did decide to fold. On table three, I get one caller to my C bet. It's this very bad player here, 8444. The turn, I decide to check, try to get to showdown. The river probably doesn't change much. He bets really small. I just call. And unfortunately, he had two pairs. See, and this is this is a great example of why I don't put a lot of money in with just aces. As you can see, he doesn't have a, a particularly great hand here. Uh, Ace, king, queen, six. So he has a triple Broadway with a suit. It's not bad, but on the flop, all he had was a pair of kings. Top pair, though, he called. The turn gave him two pair. The river changed nothing. And uh, he bet very tiny because he just had the first and fourth pair. Maybe I could have bluff raised and got him off the hand, but I don't know what he has. He could have turned a set of sixes or something. He's not going anywhere. The point being, you can see that all I ended up with, sadly, was a pair of aces. And this is why you don't play a big pot, because you can easily lose to just a very nothing hand. In PLO, it's not big. So luckily, I kept the damage at a minimum. And uh, we move on to the next hand. Wasn't much I could do about that. And a player like this, I don't know that he's going to fold two pair. If I raise him there, he may not fold. I really don't know if he would fold or not. Kind of a 50-50. Here on table two, a big pot is brewing here. A large pot's brewing here on table two. And let's see what we finished with here. So on table two, this guy had top pair and a flush draw. And that was it, right? Yeah, just kings and a flush draw. And of course, this guy had the five. See, and again, this is this is this is why you don't play big pots with just a pair. Once again, he doesn't have a five, so any five doesn't matter what their kicker is. Anybody with a five is crushing him here. If he doesn't hit his, and even if he hits his flush, this person could have a fun look. This guy did have a full house, so if he'd hit his flush, he lost his stack anyway because he's just that stupid. He literally had one pair here, and I guess he went all in on the turn. He could have hit his flush. It wouldn't have mattered. He's losing to the full house anyway. Really poor play, and that's what 87-0 players do. Really stupid there. And he gave away a stack with just a, a pair and a flush draw. So here on table three, I call the raise with my kings with a suit. Table two, I'm in early position. I'm trying to decide. I guess I am going to raise this small. 27 cents. I do make a small raise. Connected cards and pairs. Here I call, hoping to pick up something good on the flop. I get three bet on table two by the short stacker and I flop top set on table number three. I will be betting pretty large here. It is rainbow, but there is a potential straight draw out there. I'm trying to decide how big I want to bet. I get called and that's a nice card. So I now have a full house. Here on table two, generally we call three bets in PLO, as you know, because we almost always have odds to try to see a flop. It's just so much easier than hold them to improve your hand. The only issue in this case is this guy's got a small stack. So once we get to the flop, he'll he it might only have a pot size bet left. In fact, he'll have less. This is 96. If I call, that's $1.90 plus maybe the blinds. And he only has $1.59 left. I may still call with a hand like mine, see if I can take it. But if I don't improve on the flop, I do have to fold. Here on table three, now that I have top full house, it's just all about how much value can I get from this guy. This guy here, by the way, King Spastic, is very, very poor player. 68.54. Wild, wild player. He will play big pots and bet big, and he's extremely aggressive. Call down with not a lot, and uh, I won't be surprised to see him 
play a big pot against me here without that big of a hand. Let's see what happens. The table three is where the big is. So I decide to check on table three. And I want to clarify the reason why is because of the opponent. He's very aggressive. And I feel quite confident that uh, he's pushed me off a lot of pots before. I've played quite a bit with him. And uh, his main modus operandi is bet, 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 raise, 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 bully, bully, bully. That's what he does. And he wins a decent share of pots, not always big ones, by just betting a lot and pushing people around. And so my hope is that he's going to bet into me and I can raise him here and I can get him committed to where he won't be able to fold and I can take his whole stack. Here on table one, we don't catch any part of this board and I'm assuming we're going to fold. On table two, uh, let's see, I'm guessing I will call this. So I check to him on table three Let's and he does bet. Notice he bets half pot. I could just call this. I don't really have to. I decide, uh, I'm trying to decide between folding and calling. I do call the three bet. Let's pause for a moment. On table three, you notice I just called his half pot bet because there's really no cards that can come and beat me here pretty much unless he has fours and he hits a four. He'd be drawing to a one outer. He'd already had aces and, and an ace comes. I, I, I'm probably 90 plus percent here. So I decided to just call and see if I can get him to put the rest of his stack in on the river. Whereupon if I check raise the turn, he, he possibly could fold. Here... Uh, I only flop a nine high flush draw. I don't have a lot here. I have my pair of nines. I'm probably going to fold if he shoves all in, and my guess is he will. Let's see what happens on table two. I check. Now there's 10, 26 left. I check, hoping that he'll bet, and I have to fold here on table three. And he does put the rest of his money in. I call. And see, notice I check the turn and river with the nuts. I don't do that very often, but it was because of this opponent. He's very aggressive, and I knew that he would try to push me around on a paired board. And notice, look, look at this hand. He raised, by the way. He raised first in with triple tens. Six. This is a horrible hand. This is a fold all the time. You wouldn't even limp this. You wouldn't call any raise, even a min raise. Three of a kind. You can only use two cards from your, uh, your whole cards. So his odds of hitting a set are really low because there's only one ten left in the deck. He put his whole stack in. Fourteen plus dollars with just a pair of 10s on this board. I had him absolutely crushed, and I took his whole stack. And that's why I checked him on the turn of river, because I knew he would donk off his stack against me, and he did. That worked out really nice for me, really nice. I just want to point out, I did write in the chat, he's from Italy, he's Italian, Palermo, I believe, and I wrote Grazia Sino. That means thanks, donkey. This guy has taunted me a lot at the table sometimes. He'll He'll make a big bet on a board. You won't have much. You'll have to fold. He'll flip it over and show a bluff or something, a small pair, and then write something in the chat insulting. I generally just ignore it, but I thought I would uh, thank him for his donation, the $14 that he gave me. And uh, so that's the reason for the chat. He's made a lot of insulting remarks to me. And uh, every now and then I like to put a tiny dig back just to, you know, get under his skin a little bit, give him something to think about. Here on table two, I will be folding this hand. Table one, kings, but no suit. I have to fold that, too. I'm out of position. I don't have a suit. Table three, we're going to be folding also. None of those were strong enough hands. So we have a nice start here. We've already picked up almost $14 on this 20 limit table. He buys in for 4 bucks. Maybe he'll give us that, too. This is somewhat connected cards, but I don't think I'll be calling a, a raise with this, even though I'm on the button. It's just not a strong enough hand on table one. This is Italian. I wrote, I wrote, please come again. Now he has nothing to say. He was doing a lot of trash talking earlier. I guess he doesn't have much to say now. I'll be folding this on table three. I'll be folding this on table two. So not much going on there. have some fairly loose players at these tables so we should see some pretty good sized pots we've already seen some and we'll see notice we have a big pot going here looks like he three bet there was a, a raise here and then a three bet this guy called the three bet so we're going to have a big pot going on here and uh, we've already got almost you know over 450 in the middle all right so let's stop this for a second see so he three bet 
with four, five, six, seven triple suited. Um, yes, these are connected cards. He has a rundown, but this is a terrible play. You guys know you just want to see a flop. See if you hit it first. Don't commit your stack without seeing the flop. And on the flop, what does he pick up? A pair of fours, bottom pair, puts his whole stack in. Because that's what donkeys do. We saw him do it against me. With nothing, he does it again. Like, what, one hand later? Two hands later, he just can't donate his money fast enough. This player here, who's pretty laggy himself, picks up top pair plus a gut shot. So he's in very good shape here. Not that he had a monster hand, but he did have a triple Broadway with a suit. And against this guy's range, that's pretty good. So it looks like he's in very good shape. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is dirty. He hits trips on the turn. That is so sick. He hits a two-outer. The guy hits a freaking two-outer. Oh, that is sick. And I'm just taking a look at that. I'm reviewing the hand because I didn't really have time during the, the hand to look. I'm, I paused here so I could see what they had. I wanted to see what they have. Here I have a triple Broadway with a suit. I think I'll probably make a small raise, like 48 cents, 47 cents. Close enough. Here I'm just looking at, at the hand to see what they had. I didn't have time to even see what he had against me. And as we saw, he had a pair of 10s. That was it. He dumped in $14.50 with just a pair. So my raise is going to get called probably by everybody. Maybe not this Suncor, but probably everyone else. I don't really flop anything on table three. It looks like I'll probably have to give up. I have no flush draw. I have a gut shot, straight draw, ace, two, four, five, and that's it be folding on table one and so I check here with just a gut shot I really can't put any money into this pot it's not going to be enough the turn obviously doesn't help me it gives me another gutter nine ten king queen a jack would give me a straight but it can't be a club most of the time so I still don't really have anything table three I do am triple Broadway but it's all one suit so the river just gives me a pair of kings. I might limp this because I have three broadways. I may just fold it. I, and I prefer a fold. Here I just have to check on table three. I just didn't hit this board at all. And we're just going to have to see if a pair can. Look at that. I win with a pair of kings. So I just want to quickly look. This is what they're calling my raises with. This guy has ace, queen, five, eight. That's a really terrible hand. It is suited to the queen, but this is, this is, this is a bottom tier hand. And of course here he has five, six, ten, ace. The suit to the 10 means nothing. This is complete garbage. Of course, he calls a raise because that's what donkeys do. And so we win a small pot there, but we're happy to get it. But neither one of those guys should have been calling my early position raise. It's just really poorly done. Fold. Not much else going on. I didn't have anything there on table one. I believe I'll be adding a fourth table. I'm on a couple of waiting lists. I believe I'll be adding a fourth table somewhere along the line here, not to... Now I'm looking on here to see if there's any open tables, you notice. I'm jumping up onto the uh, lobby to see if I can find a fourth table. I've been trying to play four tables lately. Sometimes five, but usually four. And it looks like I found a table uh, for PLO, and I'm going to be adding that table. Oops. I've got to get back and find it. There it is. Come on, Charles, grab a seat. There we go. Come on, you got it. Yeah. So now we're going to go to four tables. So there should be a little more action. That'll be good. We always want, you know, as much action as we can get. I'm just reshuffling my tables. This will be a fold on table two. So we're going to have 20, 10, 20, and four. Tables one, two, this will be three, the four pillow, and this will be four in the right corner. Table one, I might complete here, but I don't have all. I do have a suited ace. I decide to call the 10 cents, see a flop if I can cheaply. And of course, this guy raises. That's the reason I was hesitating. But now I'm getting pretty good odds with all the other callers. If I hit a big flush draw, you know, I could win a big pot. These people, uh, if I hit a board like down here on table four, despite the monotone board, you can still get paid off. You'd be surprised. And I've shown you guys that before. Players like this will pay you off. Looks like I'm labeling somebody.
just topping off my stack. These uh, juicy steaks doesn't have auto top off. Oh no, I guess it does, but I top it off sooner. I guess it does. All right, so let's take a look at this this table because we got a three-way all in, and I think they got in on the flop. So let's see what happened here. This guy has jacks and sevens. As you know, he stacked off earlier with just kings in a flush draw against this guy. So he has jacks and sevens. That's pretty terrible. Top and bottom pair is not a good idea. This guy had seven, eight, nine, ten. So he has a uh, he had a straight. He flopped a straight. Seven, eight, nine, ten jack. And he has an eight high flush draw. That's a legitimate all in, I would say. The nut straight for now, he can get outdrawn. And he has a flush draw. The problem is it's not a very good flush draw. And this player has also a straight. Seven, eight, nine, ten jack. That's about all he has. He doesn't have higher. So it looks like these two guys are going to split the pot. And once again, this LRF 826 donates his stack because he's a horrible player. Yeah, and so he's a donkey, and that's what they do. These guys both end up with the nut straight, and this guy had jacks and sevens, and he's going to lose his stack once again. And yes, they split the pot. He wins a side pot, they split the pot, and LRF loses another $5.52. Boy, he's a bad player. Table one, we fold. We have a suited ace, but that's all we had. Table four, we might call the min raise here we're getting decent odds we do have a suited king and connected cards it's close this isn't a very strong hand i decide to fold it uh, i'm quite fine with that you could call there but you're going to miss so many boards it isn't worth it it isn't worth it so i'm actually glad i folded there but for 20 cents sometimes i will call because if i get lucky and hit something big as i've said before you can get paid off so we got four tables going now. Once again, we have a 20 PLO, 10 PLO, table two, four PLO, table three, and another 20 on table four. So two 20s, a 10, and a four. Nice mix. Hopefully we get some good hands coming up. We're double suited on table one. The pair of fives don't mean anything unless I can flop a set. But given that I'm suited to the king and to the queen, I will raise this hand in the cutoff. Obviously, I'm looking to try to hit a flush draw here. Maybe a set. More likely a flush draw. And I hit nothing. I'm only against one player here, though. But I don't know that I really want to start, you know, bluffing. So he bets. Sometimes you can check raise in a spot like this, you know, because if he doesn't have a seven, he probably has to fold. I'm kind of looking over his stats, trying to decide. But most of the time, I just let it go. But you can check raise if you think the guy's capable of, of folding, and this guy might be. I decided to just let it go, wait for a better spot. Fold on table four. I might try to limp behind here with a pair of tens, a suit, and connected cards. Uh, it's an okay hand. It's not a great hand, but it's not a terrible hand. Definitely above average. I do decide to limp behind. The risk is that this guy can raise again. He's a very laggy player, and he may make it a dollar or a dollar ten, whatever it would be. You know, that's that's the risk, really. If I know for sure he's not going to raise, I'm fine with limping in and trying to see if I get lucky and flop a set or flop a straight draw. And, of course, he does raise. That's what he does. He plays a quite laggy, not necessarily with good hands either. But we'll probably have odds to call here and see if we get lucky. And we do flop a set. A little bit of a connected board, but not enough to stop us. And I think we're going to be betting probably two-thirds pot here. We won't bet full pot because there's no flush draw. A little bit. No, we're going to get bet fairly close to pot. I get 220. Fairly close. Not quite up there. Here, I think we'll call the raise. We do triple Broadway and a suit. So this is why we call the three bets because we can get these spots. And we win a nice pot on table one. Table two, I'll probably fold here. I just have really two cards, the king and queen. Table one, we well, haven't got to that yet. Here on table, we pick up a flush draw on table three, so we call the bet, because obviously if we hit the flush, we have the nuts, unless it's an eight of diamonds and the board pairs. Unfortunately, we don't hit our flush on table three. We'll fold table four. That's a junk hand. And let's look at table one again. 
another hand is passed. So we get a raise from the button. Now this is close. We could call this. We could call this. His range is probably somewhat wide. It's not a great hand, but it's not bad. And notice we pick up top pair in a flush draw. And we check. We'll let him lead, much like Hold'em. We'll call. We had really good odds on table uh, three. And now we hit trip kings on table one. There are two flush draws out there. We have one of them. We don't have the other. And we still have a gut shot, ace, 10, king, queen. So he bets $3. We're going to call that. And OK, now check this out. We have a paired board of a flush draw. So the river gives us a royal flush. I missed this. I did not see this. I'm trying to manage three tables, four tables, three others. A contractor had come over to our house and I told my wife to deal with the contractor who was doing some work there because I'm trying to play the session of poker. And right as this hand is playing, the guy came to him. My wife couldn't answer a question. The guy comes down and he's talking in my ear and asking me a question. And I'm telling him, just a minute, just a minute. And I'm trying to play four tables and answer a question from this contractor. So this comes, and what I see is that I have the nut flush on a paired board where I have a king. And so I'm saying to him, this is sort of like, a, what are the odds? Could he possibly have the, the case king and thus have a full house maybe, which would beat my nut? And I didn't notice I had the royal flush. I had the best possible hand in all of poker. I can't possibly lose this hand. But I missed it. A mistake on my part. With four tables going, somebody talking in my ear, unfortunately, and, and that's what happens sometimes, and I take responsibility. I screwed up. I didn't see that I had a royal flush. I just saw that I had a nut flush. So watch what happens. And so he bets $7, and I just call. I would raise him here, and my guess is, people, I don't think that, uh, well, watch. I would raise here because I obviously have the best possible hand. I just call. Now, take a look. He has king, queen. He has the best possible full house. There's no way he's folding, right? So if I had raised, he would have called, and I'd have taken his whole stack. I lost out on probably an additional $9. I mean, I want a nice stack here. Look at this. I want a nice pot. I want... Uh, 11.50 more. I won over uh, 50 big blinds, but I could have won another 50 big blinds, almost. I won like 55 big blinds, and I could have won another, you know, 47 or something like that if I'd uh, seen that I had a freaking royal flush. Look at this. Yeah. Royal flush. And I didn't see it. I missed it. I don't think this guy ever folds with king, queen on this board, right? That's the best possible full house. Only thing that beats him here is is a, is a royal flush, a straight flush. You could also have 9-10 of hearts, 9-10 jack and king. So you could, the only thing beats him here is a straight flush. And I missed it. So, crap. Yeah, I lost out on like, you know, 47 big blinds or something like that. That's, that's my fault. I definitely would have won. Uh, yeah, so I won... $11, I could have won another nine. It's a shame. Forty, Another 46 big blinds or something. I'm looking at the stack now going, damn, you know, I could have won more. I'm realizing now that I, not real, I knew it once it came up, but I'm saying I'm pondering the mistake that I made. And now I'm going to call up the hand history and say, oh, geez, look at this. I'm like, oh, Charles, what did you do? I'm looking at what he had. I'm trying to figure out what he have called a raise. And then I'm like, oh, shoot, he has the nut full house. He would definitely call a raise. He would definitely call a raise. So that's a shame. That's a shame. I just uh, had too much going on at that time, and I, I messed up. Won a nice pot, but I could have won a, a lot more. That doesn't make me feel very good. I decide to limp behind on table two with uh, suited ace, some Broadway cards.
Not much on table four. I'm sure I'll fold that if somebody raises. I may get in free. If not, we'll let it go. Table two, I really don't flop anything at all. Was hoping for clubs, didn't get them. This player limps to me, so we'll see a flop. I pick up a gutter, two four ace five and top pair. Nothing special, but I'll, I'll probably call one bet. I'm in position. This guy is not very good. He bets pretty wide. I do call the bet. I think that's good. Unfortunately, the turn doesn't improve me. I hit top pair on table two, but that's all I have. Now I hit trip aces. I may be betting that. I, f I do call here with my rundown. And I pick up a wrap for five, six, seven, eight. So I think I'll be calling this bet on table three. See, we can get a lot of action. I have three tables going now. And when you have stuff like that, and then you, you can miss things like a royal flush, and that upsets me. So notice he got two pair and beat me there. I think he, he, I called him there. I didn't really see. Small pot. I won't bother looking at it. So I do call here because I have a wrap, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just back this up for a sec. Okay. So notice, I don't have hearts. That's the problem. But I still think I have odds to call here. Because with a wrap like that, um, basically, I'm trying to figure how many outs exactly I have. And uh, this is a, a wrap around two gapper, I guess. Yeah, because there's a double gap here. And so it's the board, then my two cards, then the board, then my card. So I have 13 outs on this board. Uh, not all of them to the nuts, though. And, and the problem is that somebody can have a higher draw because of this 10. If this was like a, a, a king, things would be a lot better for me. Okay. But the problem is it isn't. This is a, a 10. And so somebody can have an 8-9 for a better. So I can hit a 6 here and hit my straight. And they can have a better straight. And they can also hit a flush. So I call, but I have to be very careful on table three. And that's why I'm pausing and showing this, because I have outs, but a lot of them are not to the nuts. And you want to be very careful in PLO when you're drawing, but you're not drawing to the nuts, even against bad players like this. 95-40, 95-62, 2 These are terrible players. But that doesn't mean they couldn't hit a higher straight or a flush. So I have to be very careful here. But I do call, because if I can hit one of my, like a three, if a three comes here, then I have the nuts as long as it's not a heart. A five could give me the nuts too, but I have to be careful because something like a six would would not. So I will call a bet, but I have to be careful on this. Here on table four, it looks like I have aces with a suit, and I'm sure I'll be playing this hand, by the way. All right, so let's get back into the action. I do just call here rather than raise. I have nothing on table one. Uh, this is, of course, a bad card for me. I'm going to have to let it go now on table three. And table one, I don't have anything. I just fold. It's a tiny pot. So we get a, a raise here. And of course, I'm going to call with my aces with a suit. Unfortunately, I don't hit this board. The board pairs. I really have no part of it. I just have aces. And as we know, we're not going to play a huge pot when we just have a pair. Because we know what can happen when we do that. Notice I'm down to heads up on table one. This table is broken down. I just myself and this one player here. I don't mind playing a guy this bad. But it's just very time. It's, you play almost every hand when you're heads up. And now I'm heads up all my three-handed on, on this table. So the tables are broken. We're down to three players here, down to two players here. It's just time consuming. You have to pay much more attention when you're just one or two of you. And uh, it's hard when I got four tables to play heads up on one of those tables because I can't give the attention I need on the board because the action comes to me so quickly and so often. Here I pick up a flush draw on table two, plus I have an over pair. So I bet. Oh, too late. I just wanted to back up a sec here and see what. All right, so King Spastic here. Notice, so they play a fairly large pot. All this guy had was a pair of eights on this board. Nothing else. Six, seven, eight. I hit a gut shot. This player has king queen five eight complete air 
I mean complete air. He has a king high. And he puts in a dollar sixty of his money. This again shows you a bet. This is the guy that dumped off his stack to me earlier. So take a look at this. This is what he does. He's just betting, betting, betting. He had complete, total, utter air. And this player had very little himself. He had a gut shot on a paired board and just a pair of eights. He was willing to, you know, play a pot this size. Very, very poor. So here on table one, I don't really have much here, do I? I don't have anything. I have a pair of fives. <laughs> And so he hits a flush. I fold on table four. Here on table three, what? I do hit my flush on the river. So I hit my nut flush on the river. Nice break for me. And I am going to bet it, of course. And I get called. Let's see what this guy had. He had... So he flopped a gutter. Two, three, five, six, seven. And a pair. A gut shot and a pair. The turn did nothing. The river gave him. So once again, with a flush on the board, he has queens and sevens, second and third pair. He calls almost a dollar bet. Ten big blinds. And so he drops. This is, you know, seeing this guy losing a ton of hands. This is another dollar fifty sixty four that he loses? This is why. Calling with a weak two pair. I could easily have a better two pair or a set. Week two pair on a flush board. Donkey is as donkey does, people. And that's a very poor play. And it looks like table one. See, table one's gone now. So I'm back to three tables. Not much I can do about that. Here I've got aces with a suit. I'll just call them in raise. I don't usually three bet these. Not double suited. I'm out of position. As you notice, I really don't hit this board. There can be a made straight right now with 8-9. And all I have is just a pair of aces. Now, for 10 cents, I'll probably call. Yeah, no reason not to for 10 cents. It's a terrible bet. Unfortunately, the turn doesn't really give me anything. I still just have aces, right? So I can't really bet, can't really do anything. I just have to wait and see. It doesn't look like the river improved. Nope. So we'll have to see if we can pick up another table down the road. Here I've got a suited king and connected cards, so I make a small raise on the button on table two. And I flop trips. I should be betting here. Probably 35 cents or something like that. 36, maybe a bit more. No. What do we want to make it? We're trying to get our number, and the system is really crappy. We're going to make it 40 cents. Okay. I like it. I get, well, he only has 52 cents F, so he puts me in. We take it. Wow. He doesn't even have a, he just has a pair of tens. I know he didn't have much money left, but this is horrible. This is just horrible. And he gives me the rest of his stack. This is just so bad. Boy, this guy's terrible. That's LRF 826. I have a pretty good sized pot going here. So what happened here on table one? It looks like the flop came ace-king. Oh, they both had queen-jack, and then the turn both gave them the nut straight. Okay. So they split the pot. Makes sense. This guy was, was free-rolling, though. He had a queen and jack of spades, so he had a flush draw, too. So Ron Caglia, who's not a good player, I might add, was free-rolling this player to follow because they both had the nut straight, but he had a flush draw as well. Royal flush draw. Ace-king, queen-jack, a ten of spades would have given him the royal flush. Not that he just didn't matter because the money was, you know, in, but so they split the pot. I'd say that was fair. I'd say that was fair. I just want to see uh, what our time is here. Eh, 40 minutes, okay. We'll go for a little while longer. All right. I'll probably fold that on table one. I do. Table two. The problem is I'm under the gun with that hand. And my dog is scratching to go out. Hold on. I'm going to pause this here, people, and let my dog out. Really awkward.
let my dog out and we're back on the action. Table two. I really don't have much, do I? It looks like I'm going to, well, just against one player, I'm going to make a stab at this board. I do stab. Probably the only way I can really win the hand. He calls the river pairs. I don't really have anything now, do I? He bets 10 cents. So, now the question here is, let me just stop this for a sec. These are spots, and I had a video on this once, where you can consider a bluff. I don't have any showdown. Five, six, seven, nine. What do I have here? I have a nine high. No showdown value. He's made a very weak bet. Less than 25% of the pot. And so what I will sometimes do here is raise. Representing that I hit, say, trip jacks here. What my guess is, is he maybe has a queen. And he doesn't like this river card. He might have even had something like twos and eights, you know queens and twos and his river card doesn't he doesn't like it so he says well let me bet instead of checking which is normally what you do or put out a bet and then fold so if i was going to bet here if i then i'll bet 25 cents if the player raises me i fold because i know i'm beat instead they make this little really weak bet and what this exposes them to is now i can turn around i can raise this i can make it 50 60 cents every cent and now you know, and I'm a pretty tight player. Look at this. And and a lot of times people will just give up. They don't have a jack. Sometimes they'll call you. It doesn't work every time, but it works a good percentage. Sometimes I'll just give up. It depends on the player if it's worth it. This guy knows me well, though, and he knows I don't bluff much. He knows I have hands. And this is a spot where I might decide, I don't remember if I did, to bluff this because he's showing so much weakness on the river. Let's see what I do. I may just give it up, too, but I may decide to, I do just fold it. Okay. But that's a spot where you could have bluffed. I would not have minded a bluff there because there's not much money in the pot. You can't lose more than your 60 cents, whatever you're going to raise them to. And if you do, then so be it. I'm looking for a fourth table here to try to add a fourth. It looks like I might have found one, but maybe not. I'm trying to see the players and what how it looks. I guess I don't think it's a very good table, so I let it go. Stick with three for now. checking my my time there oh we get a big uh a big three bet here i obviously can't call table three but uh i wonder if this guy's not a very good player i wonder if he really has something he could just have aces and be doing that here i'm guessing i'll limp behind because i do have a suited ace and i could flop a set it'd be a bottom set but i could flop a set Let's just quickly see what happened on table one. So this player, who's not very good, 71-44. 6-9, Jack King. He had a gut shot, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10. He didn't hit anything, right? He's got a king high. And this guy has a 7 and a 10 top two pair but on this flush board interesting well tough low he doesn't know how to fold he'll never fold on a flush board if he's got like two pair but this guy had really nothing so I guess he made a couple of bets repping something and then had to give up and because he had air so okay nothing special there but he probably should have been out of the hand sooner somebody min raises it oh this juvie this guy's terrible so I call unfortunately the wrong suit comes I needed hearts and I got diamonds so I'll be giving up on table two I should be folding table one this isn't good enough to call a raise I don't think even against these bad players that raise very wide and we get a three bet from this trebet oh my that was a big pot let's see what happened here on table three. Oh wow look at this see this is where you got to be careful so this guy made it remember he made it two dollars so that was horrible he had kings with a dangler and a suit. Now, kings with a suit's a decent hand. You can call a raise, no question, out of position, whatever. You don't need to, to, to three-bet it and make a, put a big pot going. Uh, any ace flops and you're against two, three players, you're, you're just done with the hand. Or if the flop comes seven, eight, nine, uh, two spades, and you, you don't have spades, you're just gone. But players like this, 
you know, 79, 41. They don't know any better. So he flops top set. But look how wet this board is. Nine, king, queen, king. There's a maid straight out there and a flush draw. He has neither one. He goes ahead and stacks off. This guy flopped the straight. Nine, ten, jack, queen, king. And he takes a big pot off this guy. Sadly, if I'm getting a lot of action on a board like this with top set, I'm probably going to give it up against any anybody who you know is seemingly decent because I might play it through against like this guy, this king spastic. But against most players, even a bad player, I just this board is so wet. They can have a flush draw, they can have a made straight, they can have a straight and a flush draw. There's so many things that they could have here, and even though I've got top set, I have just no way to improve other than to hit a full house, and the board has to pair for me or hit a king. Um, this is a really wet board, and I think he probably overplayed this hand, um, and it he paid for it. Well, expensive lesson, and I just fold on table two. I have nothing. Same with table three. This one's close. Six, seven, eight, ten connected cards. Uh, but I decide to fold since I'm under the gun, although there's only four of us here. Got a, not a huge pot, but a pot starting to brew here on table three. And a lot of loose players on that table, and so we're going to see some big pots here on table three. Looking at my notes on Ron Caglia. Topping off my stack. Now we'll take a look at table three. Get a full pot bet by this Soapsat 80. Looking at this guy loses 200 and something big blinds per 100 hands. Oh wow, look at this. Look at this. Big raise. He better have a good hand to call that. And he folds, yeah. Weak hand, I'll be folding this, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm all right. I don't even need to see the action to know that hand's going to go. It's a junker hand. But we've done okay. We're up a little bit on table two. We're up a nice amount on table three, and we're just waiting for our spots. Here we have queens with a suit. The six is a dangler, but I wouldn't mind seeing a flop. I'm out of position, but I might call this raise here. I'm trying to decide. I do. I think that's a good call. Again, with against players like this, if I can flop something good, I can win a big pot. Sadly, I do not. I just want to quickly see what happened on table one. Oh, this guy flopped a set. Bottom set. Set of fives. And this guy hit a straight. Queen, king, ten. So on the turn, he picked up a straight. This guy didn't hit his full house, and he lost the rest of his money. Ron Cagley is not very good. Okay. Wasn't able to let it go at that point. Okay. Here I just don't have anything on table two. I've just got the pair of queens. I'm not going to be able to do anything if I don't hit, uh, you know, a set. And there's now a, a possible made straight with a 5-8 or an 8-10 on table two. So a set might not even be good. And I'm sure I'll just be check folding. No reason to get uh, to get frisky when you don't really have anything. Huh, and I win. <laughs> my pair of queens was good. Oh, my. Look at that. That's funny. Uh, I will probably limp behind on table two. I'm going to fold on table three. Table one, I flop top two pair. I'll probably bet this. I do bet it. I don't have the flush draw, but I have top two pair, so I want to put some money. And now I hit the full house. So we're going to bet again, I would hope. Yep, two-thirds pot. I like it. I like it. Everybody folds. Oh, well. So notice I have a full house here, tens over sevens. I don't have the nut full house. So on table two, on the flop, I had nothing. On the turn, I hit my set. And because the board's paired, I now have tens over sevens. I have the third nuts now. First nuts would be a pair of jacks. 
I'm sorry, first nuts would be a pair of sevens for quads. You can never really discount that completely, although I'm not going to give somebody credit for that in full. But second nuts is a pair of jacks. Third nuts is a pair of tens, which is what I have. So I have the third nuts. I'm going to be putting some money in here. And based on stack sizes, I don't know that I would fold anybody. So if one of these guys bets and I raise and they re-raise, well, that's going to be a decision there. Yeah, I don't know yet. But because this guy, I probably wouldn't fold for the 584 because, you know, it wouldn't be that much more to call. This guy's a bit more. I don't know. that that. Well, we'll see if it happens. Probably won't. But that, that'd be tough. But this is a situation where you can lose money because you don't have the nut full house. You don't. Quads is one thing, but you don't even have the nut full house. Somebody can't have jack-jack. It's not impossible at all. And because they would have flopped the Stone Cold Nuts, notice, they would have slow played the hand. So there wouldn't be much money in yet. So this is a spot where you have to be a little bit careful. I still bet. But if somebody raises me here, it could get ugly. I'm still betting, though. And he calls me again. What did he have? Okay, so let's take a look. He had... So on the flop, he had a pair of jacks. On the turn, he had a gut shot. Six, seven, eight, ten. On a paired board, and he had the eight high flush draw. So he hit his uh, gutter? Yeah. So he has six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so he has uh, the lower straight, the non-nut straight on a paired board. And he paid me off again. God, this guy's bad. Because notice, there's a higher straight there. Queen-King is a higher straight, right? Eight-Jack. Oh, he has eight-Jack. My bad. Okay, so he has the second nut straight. Okay, he has a second nut straight. He has eight-Jack. He has a second nut straight on a paired board. I, I don't like the call. I don't like the call. I think that's a mistake. Just my opinion. But on a paired board there, I think it's a mistake. So he pays me off. Okay, I'm fine with that. Win, a, win another dollar sixty, another 17 big blinds. I'll take it. On table two. Nice. <sighs> table one. I would probably complete here. I do have a suited ace. For two cents, I'd probably complete. Problem is somebody can raise. This tuffalo is... So I guess I fold because I don't think it's worth it. He's very likely to raise, as you can see, 40%. I decided to just let it go. I'm fine with that. Table three, I have a decent-sized pot going here. Nothing huge, 20 PLO, but a little bit of a pot going. I'd like to get a fourth table, but I guess I just hadn't found anything. I'm updating my notes. I keep these because if my HUD goes down, which happens sometimes, I still have full, not just notes, but stats on these guys, what they play, which can come in quite handy. I've had to use them before. I would have flopped a set. Trip six is a foot. would have actually flopped a set. Uh, here, I decide to min-raise with just a suited ace on the button. Table one. I get three bet by the short stack. Trying to decide, I decide to call. I don't really hit much here. A pair. He's only got 54 cents, though. But I just don't have anything. If I had even a pair of tens, I'd probably call for the price. But I just don't have anything. Let's take another quick look. This guy has lost so many pots. How many pots has this LRF lost? Like 12? Oh, my God. So let's see what happened here. Two, four, five, six. Oh, a pair of sixes? That's all he had? Yeah, I mean, he had nothing here. This guy has a straight, right? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, this guy has a straight. The nut straight. And this guy has nothing. Loses another over a dollar, right? God. Oh, you, sir, need to give up the game. You, you are really bad. Really, really bad. 
This guy pays people off just left and right with just air. He wasn't even drawing to anything there, really. God. Amazing. So I'm heads up against this bad player, and I flop uh, top pair. I check it, though. Now I pick up a flush draw on the turn, so that's nice. I'll probably bet the turn if he checks, I'm thinking, but we'll see. He bets. I just call, and I hit my flush on the river. That's always nice. I hit the nut flush on the river. He bets 60 cents. I raise him. Now, he could have a straight flush, notice, 6, 7, 8, but I'm not giving him credit for that. If he does, good hand, sir. Now, if he re-re-raised me, well, he's not have a big enough stack. But let me just pause this for a sec. If you, you're up against, you know, anybody that's semi-semi-competent. So he makes it 60 cents here. Let's say that I, I pot it, which, as you see, is $3. I go 3 bucks. Let's say he had a full stack. He now makes it, you know, 9 or 10, whatever the pot size battle of. Now I gotta go, oh, wait a minute. Now, first you vomit in your mouth. Then you vomit in your mouth again. Then you say, holy shit, because you have the nut flush. The only hand that beats you is a straight flush. So somebody has to have, problem is there's three of them. Four or five of diamonds, nine, 10 of diamonds, or five, nine of diamonds. There's three possible straight flushes here. So if like this guy, Suncor, was sitting here and I raised and he had more chips and he, you know, at 418, I'm just not going to fold. I put in three bucks and he makes another dollar 18. I'm never folding. But if he has, you know, 20 bucks and he now makes it uh, 12 or whatever it is after I make it three, 1150, I, I probably have to fold with the nut flush. So it's just something to bear in mind. You always have to be looking at the board. It's easy to miss these things. Like I missed the royal flush at the beginning of the session. I've seen people miss that there's a possible straight flush out there and dump off 150 big blinds. So bear that in, which is I have over 150 big blinds here. So bear that in mind. Straight flushes do happen in PLO. And in this case, I'm not going to fold, but sometimes you have, to, you have to bear it in mind. So I pot it to him. Well, if he has a straight flush, he's going to let me know because he's going to put the money in. He's thinking. I don't think he has that much, but I'm hoping he has a high enough flush that he'll call me. Well, he puts it in. Let's see. No, he just had a queen high. Thank you, sir. Beautiful. That's nice. So we can see. On the flop, he had a pair of tens. On the turn, he just has the tens and a flush draw. The river brings in the flush. He has the third nut flush. See, he stacked off with the third nut flush. Against me, I'm just telling you, if you ever play against me in PLO, any of you guys, that is never, ever, 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 ever good. I'm never going to pot raise you with uh, the fourth nut flush. Never. I might call. If I had a jack high flush there and I don't think you're you know, particularly good like this guy, I might call that 60 cents. And then if you have an ace, king, or queen high flush, okay, you won three big blinds off me in this case. I'm never raising you with the jack high flush. Never. So this guy is not paying attention. Doesn't even seem to realize I'm the tightest player. Well, this guy's a little bit tighter than me, Suncor. But that's terrible. You can't just look at the raw strength of your hand, people. He can't just say, I have a queen high flush. I, I, I put the money in. You have to say, what raises me here that I beat? And the only thing that raises you here that you beat is a jack high flush. You have the 10. Notice he has the 10. So am I doing this with a jack or a nine high flush? Never. But he didn't understand that and he just gave me almost $5. Thank you very much, sir. Let's take a look at our time. We're almost at an hour, so I'll do a little bit more and I'll probably end this right around now. A couple more hands, but that worked out really nice for me. And you notice I won more, and so very helpful there. And I'm up to, what am I up to on this table? Close to 40, uh, 37, $8 now? I can't see because of this. We'll see in a moment. $37, nice. Almost a, a full buy-in. Uh, he left, so this table's breaking up. So we'll be ending this video. I think this table breaks up, and I guess I could end the video then. I did play on a bit, but 
probably be a good time to end the video. It's just myself and Suncorn. He's a he's a nit. I'm not going to be playing heads up against him. That's a waste of time. That's a waste of time. He knows it too. He'll probably uh, leave. We're not. We know each other. There's no. We're not going to make any money off each other. Yeah. There's no point. No point at all. So I'm going to leave that table. So I guess this is a good spot to end the video. I think I had a good hour there. And let me do that. So I hope you guys. Um, let me pause this. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Uh, this review of the uh, session at Juicy Steaks. As you saw, I did pretty good. I broke even at this four table, didn't really do anything. I won a little bit of money at this 10 limit table, especially this uh, LRF player. And then of course, I almost won a full buy-in at this 20 little table, winning some some big pots, uh, especially that last one there. It was not super big, but it was a nice pot with the nut flush. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the forums. Um, I've been doing a lot of series lately, as you know, a lot of videos related to series so I thought in this one I would review some some play and I may have a live play video coming up soon so look for those and as always if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see the one or two of you that are watching these videos please let me know and this has been CF the natural for grinderschool.com and until next time good luck at the tables